I need $5 million because I want to buy bread for my sister. Our five-year-old grandson stole the title deed to our house. He said he wanted to feed his sister because she was hungry. Even though our grandson himself was thin and hungry, he seemed determined to get a large sum of money for his sister. How did it come to this? While bewildered, I tried to protect my grandchildren and wanted to consult my husband, but... I'll throw them in the slammer. My husband, face red with rage, terrified our grandson. What's going to happen now? My name is Nancy. My husband, Jason, and I retired in our 50s and were enjoying a leisurely life. Hey, Nancy, please. Our household budget is tight again this month. Seeing my daughter-in-law smiling while bowing her head only superficially, I felt weary. My son John and his wife Amy moved out of our house three years ago and were living with our five-year-old grandson Harrison and our two-year-old granddaughter Mary. Since they lived in the same town as us, Amy often came to our house, seeking financial help. They always seemed to be in need of money, making me doubt if they were really working properly. I became worried about my grandchildren and asked several times to see them, but there was always some excuse, and I couldn't meet them. Come on, Nancy, you have plenty of money to spare, don't you? You know, Amy, money doesn't just come out of nowhere. But you both do stocks and investments, don't you? That's the reason my husband and I were able to retire in our 50s. We decided to spend the rest of our lives volunteering and helping others. Please, Nancy, help us. If we can't pay this month's rent, we'll be evicted. First, establish a stable livelihood so you can live without relying on us. We were troubled by her monthly demands for money. Suddenly, Amy's face twisted in anger. Are you going to abandon your son and grandchildren when they're hungry? You miser! Heartless! You're not even human! Amy's outburst left me completely exasperated. All right, all right, but this is the last time. Thank you so much. As soon as I gave in, Amy's mood improved. But I'm sure she'll come asking for money again next month. Hey, could you let me see my grandchildren? If you're in such financial trouble that you might get evicted, are Harrison and Mary okay? Oh, they're fine. Don't worry about my kids. No, I am worried. Can't you just let me see how they're doing? Besides, she had just admitted that they were hungry. Seeing my suspicion, Amy looked annoyed again. Could you stop meddling in other people's family affairs? We're family, aren't we? Just because you lend us money, don't get too high and mighty. Ugh, how patronizing. I was annoyed by her words, but I tried to continue negotiating. Eventually, Amy relented and said, I'll talk to my husband. Later, my son contacted me and said, We're sending our five-year-old son over. The last time I saw my grandson, he was two, so I was eagerly awaiting our reunion. Then, my five-year-old grandson Harrison came to visit us. It's been a long time. Do you remember your grandma? I smiled at him as gently as I could, but he just looked around the room nervously. Amy came with Harrison, but quickly left, saying, All right, I'll leave him with you. Of course, he would be anxious being left alone in an unfamiliar house. Moreover, just as I had feared, 
Harrison was extremely thin, possibly not getting enough to eat. His clothes were also too big and ill-fitting. This is worrisome. What are John and Amy doing? I decided that whenever Harrison came over, I would at least serve him delicious meals. Additionally, when Amy came to pick him up, I gave her a small amount of money, saying, Please use this for your children. Amy looked surprised, then smirked. Thanks for the extra cash. She kissed the envelope containing the money. I hope they don't use this for themselves. I stressed that it was for the grandchildren, but I couldn't help feeling uneasy seeing Amy's reaction. And there was something else that had been bothering me. It seemed that Harrison had been exploring the house whenever I wasn't looking, often rummaging through drawers and cabinets. When I noticed and asked, What are you doing? He would hastily return things to their places. But as soon as I looked away again, he would go right back to the same spots. Harrison came to visit every day, and for about three days, he repeated this behavior, making me curious. On the fourth day, Harrison, dinner's ready. What are you doing? I couldn't believe my eyes. My grandson was holding the title deed to our house. Harrison, that's not a toy. Please give it to me. I extended my hand gently, but Harrison shook his head. I need five million dollars. I was stunned by his words, but Harrison's face was deadly serious. He genuinely believed that the title deed could be sold for five million dollars. Why do you need money? I want to buy bread for my sister Mary. I decided to listen to what he had to say. The situation in my son's household was worse than I had imagined. Mom and Dad ignore Mary even when she's crying because she's hungry. They weren't providing enough food, and they ignored Mary until she cried herself to exhaustion. Harrison must have been thinking about how he could help his sister. When I had asked to see my grandchildren, my son John saw an opportunity for his scheme. Dad said if I brought the title D from Grandma's house, we could get $5 million and have lots of good food. My son and his wife were using Harrison to try and steal the title deed. Using a child who doesn't even understand what $5 million means to commit theft is unforgivable. Seeing my angry expression, Harrison looked anxious. What's going on, Nancy? At that moment, my husband Jason returned from his volunteer work in town. I explained the situation to him, and he too wore a stern expression. Hey, can't we temporarily take care of the grandchildren? However, he turned red with anger and shouted. I'll throw them in the slammer. Harrison, shocked and on the verge of tears, said, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Wait a minute, dear. But then Jason embraced Harrison and wept. Oh, you poor thing. Even though you're so skinny, you're thinking about your sister. It seemed his anger was directed at our son and daughter-in-law. I sighed in relief. Overcome with sorrow for our grandchildren, I placed my hand on Harrison's shoulder and cried too. Together, my husband and I resolved to take action against our son and daughter-in-law. As usual, I served Harrison a delicious meal. He always ate eagerly, devouring every bite. Staring at the empty plate, he murmured, I want Mary to eat until she's full too. That brought even more tears to our eyes. Then, my husband and I contacted our son and his wife to discuss the matter. Hey, can you bring Mary over too? 
We'd like to have both of them stay with us. No, she's still only two years old and too young. Are you saying that because you don't want us to see how thin both of them are? When my husband pressed them, there was silence on the other end of the line. Hey, stay out of our family's business, will you? I can't just ignore this situation. You're trying to take our kids away from us. You monsters. Amy started screaming again, making any conversation impossible. In the end, she didn't come to pick up Harrison, so he stayed with us. She was probably afraid of my husband and decided it was too difficult to take Harrison by force. Despite being rebuffed by our son and daughter-in-law, we persisted and gathered evidence of their neglect. Three days later, we went to John's house unannounced. What are you doing here? Get out! We're here to take Mary into our care. We told you to stay out of our family matters. Our visit caused an uproar. Harrison was staying with a neighbor, and Mary was napping at the time. Despite the commotion, our granddaughter slept soundly. We have proof that you haven't been properly caring for Harrison and Mary. I said, glaring at them. They seemed momentarily taken aback, but quickly regained their composure. How could you know that without even coming here? Stop bluffing! As John and Amy mocked us, I held up my phone. The screen displayed videos of them ignoring a crying two-year-old Mary while engrossed in their phones, captured at various locations like the park and supermarket. What is this? Did you secretly film us? And I took Harrison to the hospital and got a diagnosis. He's clearly malnourished. How do you have so much time for this nonsense? Must be nice to be retired and bored. They insulted us, but it was clear their confidence was waning. I shook my head calmly. There's no way just the two of us could gather all this evidence. We had help. Who helped you? Bring them here! I need to give them a piece of my mind. We could bring them, but I doubt they'd all fit in this house. John looked confused. You know we've been volunteering since we retired in our 50s, right? So what? What's that got to do with anything? Through our volunteer work, we enlisted the help of the entire town. Everyone except you two. As my husband laughed, John and Amy's faces turned pale. The townspeople had listened to our story with shock and anger. When my husband asked for their help to gather evidence against you, I continued. Everyone was more than willing to assist and asked, Didn't you feel the town watching you lately? Everyone was keeping an eye on your actions. John and Amy clutched each other's hands, trembling with fear. All right, prepare to be thrown in jail. Ah! Oh. No! Wait, don't leave me! As my husband blocked the front door with an imposing stance, John and Amy, in a panic, tried to escape through the back door. However, both let out yelps and fell to the ground, their legs giving way beneath them. Gathered there were townspeople, ready with cameras and smartphones to document everything. So, what's your next move? There's no escape now. I said as I slowly walked up to them. John and Amy, realizing they had no way out, dropped to their knees and began begging. We're sorry. We'll change our ways. I promise. Please, forgive us. We'll take proper care of the kids. 
Despite their desperate pleas, no one there was willing to forgive them. I have just one question for you. I said. What? What is it? Sensing a glimmer of hope, they looked up with expectant eyes. What did you do with all the money you begged from us and the money we gave you for the grandchildren? Well, uh. John averted his eyes, unable to answer, and Amy remained silent. I believe the answer is right here. My husband, who had been searching through the other rooms, emerged carrying brand name bags and sneakers, tossing them onto the floor. They scrambled to gather the scattered items in their arms. You took our money and spent it on luxury items for yourselves. You can't deny it anymore. Surrender quietly and accept your fate. At that moment, as if on cue, the police arrived with sirens blaring. John and Amy were forcibly shoved into the police car, crying and screaming, as they were taken away. Afterward, our son and daughter-in-law were arrested and faced severe charges for their actions. We cut ties with them and initiated a lawsuit demanding the repayment of all the money we had lent them. John and Amy now have a substantial debt and will likely have to work tirelessly to repay it once they are released. As for our grandchildren, Harrison and Mary, we decided to take them in and raise them ourselves. When we served them meals, they cried with joy, saying, delicious, delicious, as they ate. Now, both have filled out considerably, no longer the gaunt, underfed children they once were. Going forward, we plan to continue living joyful, bright days filled with smiles, alongside our beloved grandchildren.